All right, Travis Wayne Goodsell. Uh, it's a uh, full moon right now, where I'm at at least, in the world. And uh, I just dropped off the uh, motion for recusal of both Judge Waddups and uh, uh, Judge First. And so, yeah, I'm cautious of every move I make and uh, of uh, potential retaliation because the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a criminal organization. They are the Church of the Devil, technically speaking, in religious terminology. Uh, I thought of how to do a video on all that and uh, so I'm kind of winging it here rather than planning videos. I thought about doing a Mormon stories that may still be the title uh, but Mormon stories is more of me not about uh, talking about the church uh, born and raised Mormon you must understand that right off the bat if you're a Mormon you need to understand that I'm one of you I'm not against you it's what I've learned. It's how I've been treated. And you say, oh, your feelings were hurt. You don't need to get white supremacist on me. My own mother got white supremacist on me. I don't need it from you, too. But that's part of the problem, isn't it, Mormons? You know it's a white supremacist thing to do, to call people just sensitive, being emotional, uh, specifically to guys but uh, I've been uh, trying to uh, explain it through shorter videos and unless I put Mormon temple porn it doesn't catch anybody's attention <laughs> but that one died out I got the 277 views and it's dead nobody's even going to it anymore you expect people to keep trickling in but uh, it's not the case I guess everybody who uh, uh, YouTube had allowed to have it on their their recommended list uh, that was it <laughs> or YouTube blocked it so that it won't show up on any more people's recommended list Obviously, it was no porn. It was about a book I published. <laughs> and I showed the picture of the cover. A temple dress that's not approved by the church. And that's part of the problem, as I put in my lawsuit. Because the church forces us, Mormons, to be bigamous. The United States came down and hammered them hard with the Edmunds Tucker Act. No more polygamy guys. They removed Mormons out of the government positions in this area um, because of that. Because their bias would defend the position of polygamy. So the United States had to clear out the Mormons from all positions and offices in government. Uh, and you'd think Mormons would have learned, but they don't. Uh, they had this inner resentment that they didn't see themselves as committing crimes. And as a result, they saw the United States as their enemy. And they've always considered, since then, the United States as an enemy to Mormonism. And, uh, and so they outwardly complied, eventually, and uh, now Mormons are forced to commit bigamy because all of you who have been divorced in the church you all know that the wife ex-wife has to uh, get a cancellation of her sealing 
from her ex-husband before she can marry again, whereas the man can continue to marry in the temple as long as the first presidency approve it. Uh, they've added approval for marriages from both spouses, regardless of of, uh, of uh, standing or whatever. And you don't even have to be a Mormon anymore because the person can uh, give their word. No, I don't like my ex. He can't marry in that demon temple. Of course, that will automatically rush his. Temple marriage if the ex is that uh, angry against the church. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's those little things that as we grow up as Mormons, we go, wait a minute, uh, something's not right. And if we actually study our scriptures, we get confused because we read one thing and if we've done well in English or whatever language we grow up in uh, using those scriptures uh, we get confused when we hear from other Mormons even church leaders in conference and so I born and raised in the church I thought I was the lucky one oh wow oh, I wonder why I was born in the true church and then that was my first problem why me why uh, in 1986 Benson was made uh, president of the church and gave a talk to me as a teacher and uh, said that I was the royal army of the Lord uh, that uh, was held back for billions of years from before the foundation of the earth to come down on earth at this time and so that of course gets me thinking oh all right I'm the chosen one <laughs> a chosen one <laughs> and then I hear of Mormons who actually think they're the chosen one they get at this messiah complex and they commit crimes Brian David Mitchell for example and, uh, and you just wonder what's going on but uh, as an eight-year-old kid you get baptized and uh, you want to get it over with you want to get the Holy Ghost because you don't like sitting around listening to people giving talks you're not too excited about singing. And then there's a convert family that's that's going in front of you. <laughs> I thought I was the chosen one. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> lots of jokes if we could just get Mormons to lighten up. Lots and lots of jokes. But uh, wasn't that Chieko Okazaki? Didn't she do something, uh, published a book or something about lighten up? I think she did. Because I've been helping my neighbor, the devout Mormon still, because he doesn't do any reading, doesn't do any research, uh, and so he's just subjected to whatever he's told to believe. And uh, because of his physical disability, uh, it's difficult for him to uh, get the, the DVDs out of the case and into the DVD player and then back out and back in again. And so I've been digitizing the conference talks for him. And so as I'm going to the church's site to get the conference talks, I'm seeing the titles of all the talks. 71 all the way to the current 2019 and with what I know now I'm shocked and horrified that I missed all of it because uh, obedience if you've seen the recent videos yeah that's why it's because I'm 
seeing the titles of all the conference talks and I'm seeing who's the one trying to perpetuate that doctrine and as Mormons were raised in the theology of Mormonism that before the earth was formed we had spirit bodies created by our Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother and those spirit bodies were in the presence of Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother and we were taught about an earth and, and, uh, and the whole plan of salvation where uh, Heavenly Father's plan was agency that we get to come to earth and choose which kingdom of glory we want to achieve in the afterlife after we die on earth and of course the highest degree of glory is to be like God who has a wife because polygamy was done and over with so they no longer talked about Heavenly Father having more than one wife and uh, so the whole polygamy thing was like polygamy? what polygamy? we don't practice polygamy and everybody else who's not Mormon comes up to us and says so how many wives do you have? I uh, don't get the joke it's because the church has been deceiving us and uh, and to know that Lucifer in Mormon theology was our brother uh, you can bash it all you want as somebody of another religion who doesn't believe in that uh, but respect for other religions uh, must take precedence over your desire to bash somebody else's theology when the theology turns into criminal behavior then you've got to say ho oh, oh, hold on here uh, then you can start doing that but to debate theology uh, is difficult because what physical evidence do you have to defend a position on either side you don't and thus it's ridiculous to say well our theology is true yours is false it's ridiculous and uh, uh, Lucifer's plan was well Heavenly Father I love everybody I don't want anybody to miss out on the highest degree of the celestial kingdom and to breed for all eternity yeah Mormons get to breed in the highest degree of the celestial kingdom they don't say that they just say sealed with a spouse for all eternity and it's supposed to be understood <laughs> but as a kid it's like oh yeah whatever you have no clue where babies come from you just uh, know as the firstborn and not as I was that uh, mom somehow got fat in the belly you're just like eh, alright whatever you're just clueless you have no concept of it because you don't get taught sex ed and of course you don't want to be taught sex ed because that gives you images of your parents and when you're a high school kid watching TV late at night directly under their bed uh, fortunately it didn't last long I have no honor for my parents I know it's a commandment from the Ten Commandments screw them they betrayed me and it's a long story but that's life as Mormon because of this whole concept of Lucifer's plan of happiness the church that Lucifer establishes on earth and Mormons are aware of it because the Book of Mormon in Nephi's dream talks about the great and abominable church 
and then there's a, the passage that talks about there are only two churches the church of the devil and the church of God and uh, and and so you're expected to believe that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the true church, the Church of God. And so you never think to analyze and look for the characteristics and the organizational structure and the manner in the Church of the Devil, the Church of Lucifer. And with the actual Church of Satan, that is in existence, physical reality with an actual walls and and, podi and chapel and whatever. Uh, Mormons think, oh, okay, well, that's it. Well, I just won't be a part of that church and I'm safe. And we deceive ourselves because Lucifer is a lot smarter than that. And uh, those of us who actually do the research and I've been thinking maybe I should do a book on that do the whole chart of, of the Lucifer's plan of happiness how he uh, runs things in his organization and, and the structure of the organization itself as outlined in the Book of Mormon uh, because it's obviously a Mormon theological book so I can't do it as a Catholic. <laughs> you must believe this, Catholics, because I'm the chosen one. <laughs> uh, and so uh, I hope Mormons do that. Because when scandalous reports are on the local news here in Utah or by the Washington Post that get buried as certain news topics get precedence uh, you need to understand Mormons that you can't apologize for the church to apologize is not to say oh sorry or in Canada sorry I lost my Canadian accent. I've been away for too long. <laughs> and no, I'm not from Canada. Uh, it's, it's to tell lies to defend a position. Uh, fallacies, technically, and in the uh, philosophical de definition of a fallacy, it's not technically a lie though that could be the motivation for telling a fa fallacy uh, it's just making an unsound argument and so Mormons uh, do fall into that category when they don't realize that they're lying for the church when like Kwaku I, I, I will point him out you can tell him I talked about him and uh, he can watch this video too because he's a part of this is that uh, his uh, famous video that he did that I've made fun of on numerous occasions and on numerous platforms is that he claims that the plagiarism in the Book of Mormon is proof of its truth that's a fallacy Kwaku believes that he's telling the truth. He's defending the church. As a Mormon, he's supposed to do that. Because we make oaths and covenants, and we are forced to pay tithing as protection money, and, and we just are clueless. Because we think this is God's true church. Okay, God, if that's what you want, I will do what you ask. I will go, I will do the things the Lord commands. It's all in our songs. It gets ingrained in us. Um, we're brainwashed. That's what brainwashing is. Is where you get re-educated. And uh, uh, 
in the world, brainwashing also is accompanied with drugs uh, to help make it worse. But religion, as Karl Marx uh, properly recognized, uh, is comparable to opiate, opioids, opiates. Uh, he was somewhat misquoted, but he, he recognized that uh, people have this addiction to need to go back to church to get that feeling inside that they're on good terms with God. And that's how Mormons are, aren't you? You go to church to feel the Spirit, when if you'd only study the actual scriptures to learn what the Spirit actually is, you'd first know that it's not the Holy Ghost. Or the Holy Spirit, as it's also called. But again, the Holy Ghost is a personage of spirit. It's, it's a formation of the spirit, just like our bodies, our spirit bodies are. And it's that spirit element that is everywhere in Mormon theology. And so when Mormons claim, well, I need to go to church to feel the spirit, I need to make my home a godly home. I need to go to the temple to feel the Spirit. I need to stand in holy places. I can't go in that that uh, liquor store or strip club. I'm so glad that the church had that strip club shut down because they they rezoned in the legislature. To... I won't go into those horrifying details, but uh, that's where Mormons get confused when a woman gets raped. Because everybody assumes it's the woman's fault for getting raped because she wasn't standing in holy places. And then you have BYU. That's supposed to be a holy place for women to stand in. How are they getting raped? It's not possible. They must have done something wrong. And that's been a big scandal since 2017, at least. As BYU has now made changes so that they no longer punish, at least in the public realm. I'm sure they'll find other ways, as I've heard not too long ago, um, 2018 maybe, maybe 2019, about a woman who was punished for something other than being raped. It's just mind-boggling when you recognize the big picture, when you see the church as it really is, and you realize, dear God, I wasn't born in Jesus Christ's church at all. I was born in Lucifer's church. And that's shocking. And that's disheartening. And emotionally painful. Because everything is now clear. You now understand the abuse that goes on. Why Mormons treat their fellow humans so evil because they've been brainwashed in the church of evil, literally. Because it's not about agency, is it, Mormons? Just look at the homeless. What did they do to the homeless? Have you been paying attention? It's not about giving the homeless agency. They're taking it away from the homeless. They're trying to control the homeless. And these are all Mormons that are doing this. Operation Rio Grande, opera, or, uh, the uh, downtown revitalization project with the gateway right across the street from the homeless shelter on Rio Grande. They knew exactly what they were doing. And they took their time to build up to it 
to what they're doing to the homeless today. And when you realize that you're in the wrong church and that Mormons all profess with their lips to be followers of Jesus, but their actions are far from him, you just you just want to break down and cry. But I mean, we had the Book of Mormon Mormons. We were warned. We knew how the great and abominable church was structured. We knew of the, the rich Zoramites, how they treated the poor. We knew about the Antichrist and their philosophies to justify it. The slaying of Gideon by a, a man who was practicing preachcraft and enforced it with murder. We know about the Gadianton robbers. Their secret handshakes. Their secret code words. about Cain from the extra information that's in the Joseph Smith translation as it's called. It's actually a revision by Sidney Rigdon but again we're lied to uh, where uh, I am now master of, uh, I am Mahan master of the great secret that I may murder to get gain and then you see your co-workers, your Mormon co-workers, as they lie and deceive and falsely accuse in order to secure themselves promotions at work. And then you watch as Governor Herbert wants to raise taxes on food again and says, but I'm putting in extra benefits in the tax returns. How many homeless and how many in poverty pay taxes, Governor Herbert? Mormon Herbert? None of them. And so you realize He's an agent of the devil in religious speak. That the legislature are servants of the devil. Because that's the God they serve. They can call him by whatever name they want to call him, but a banana is still a banana. I did that video a long time ago seems like a long time ago and showed a banana uh, meme that had uh, written on the banana I am not a banana <laughs> and that's part of the trick of brainwashing is that they redefine common words and so again we all believed we were in the true church of Jesus Christ. After all, we argue, Jesus Christ is in the center of the name of the church. It's a fallacious argument, by the way. But all Mormons say it. Of course we're the true church of Jesus Christ. He's in our name. Only the true church would have Jesus' name in it. And again, we get that from the Book of Mormon. And we just don't think. We don't question. As a, a young man, I did question. I did make lots of satirical comments. Because what my teachers and, and people were saying in the church as Mormons 
were contradictory to what I understood from reading. And so, yes, I was very sarcastic to people in the church as a young boy. Because what they were promoting was wrong. And I knew it was wrong because it corresponded with what I read about wrong behavior and the church of the devil and Satan's plan of happiness. And so that's why I'm an LDS critic. But Mormons purposely have this wall set up in their minds to automatically categorize me as anti-Mormon so that they can justify changing the channel or complaining saying oh you're an antichrist and all sorts of kwaku apologetics which are just fallacies lies to defend the church as if it were the true church and so when you know in 78 I still remember being in the chapel and I was uh, lying in my mother's lap because that's what I always did church bored me I wanted to go to sleep and uh, back in 78 when I was eight years old just got baptized uh, I was uh, old and I was still able to sleep in my mom's lap at that time and I remember getting up waking up as the whole audience was murmuring and I was like what's going on I don't understand that's when the church decided to uh, take protection money from blacks they didn't say it that way did they they always claim innocence oh we're allowing the blessings of the temple to all worthy members that's how they word it but then when you break it down well okay what is worthy mean oh okay it's the temple recommend questions what's on the temple recommend questions do you pay a full tithe so if you're poor and you have to decide do I pay my tithing or do I eat and live because my bishop says that I have to get a job that pays enough money so that I don't need assistance in order to get assistance which then you shake your head and go what? <laughs> I need assistance now and so yeah it, it becomes shocking even though we knew we saw the signs we questioned in our mind we doubted it's the propaganda teachings of the church to brainwash us to say oh well that means you don't have faith if you have doubts you don't have faith you need to have faith and then you realize they're not teaching about producing the fruits of our faith because if they did we would all realize it's the wrong church and so they have to teach us that testimony is redefined as a spiritual witness just a feeling you get testimony is no longer an actual testimony as one gives in a court of law yes your honor I saw the defendant shoot that woman instead we can go into a courtroom and say you know the spirit is telling me that that man over there he's a bad man I don't trust him and I know he's done something that makes him guilty. Big difference, isn't there? And so 
with social media, uh, and that has chased out many Mormons. Thank God. And so the ones who are still Mormon, you're the hardcore. And that's not a good thing. You're the ones who have been blinded the most. Because the Mormons who leave, I still recognize that they still didn't get it. That they left over one issue, not understanding why it was an issue in the first place. Uh, many people, it was for finding out that the church practiced polygamy. Oh, well, that can't be true. But then they don't stop to think of everything else the church is doing then. Because if it's not true because of polygamy, then it's not true for other things as well. Uh, other Mormons who left, it's for racism. Finding out Brigham Young was a racist. Uh, and, and so on and so forth. But you got to put all of it together to realize, oh my God, it really is pure evil. They are not only structuring the organization after a criminal organization and are collecting protection money, just like a criminal organization does, calling it tithing, that they also have a pyramid scheme plan with missionary recruitment. And Mormons are suckers for pyramid schemes because Utah allows them. If you don't know what a pyramid scheme is, plenty of videos on uh, YouTube that will help educate you on that. But uh, USANA, USANA Amphitheater, uh, doTERRA, the oils. Mom was even involved in Avon. And uh, my ex-brother-in-law came to me when he was my brother-in-law. Uh, when I first moved down to Utah, I said, Oh, there's this new thing. You want to have money for your family, don't you? You want to be able to provide nice things for your wife and be able to take care of your kids, right? It's like, oh my God. Own family. But that's what it is. Mormons have to pay to go on missions. And what do they do on their missions? They recruit. And what happens once somebody's recruited? They get baptized and have to pay tithing. And then they also end up serving missions. And that recruitment cycle continues. That's the pyramid scheme. But you don't see it because you think, oh, I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus to the world who are in darkness. And you get fooled by that. That you say, okay, well, yes, I'm sacrificing of my money to tell other people about how great the church is. And you get blinded because of the church's requirements. The demand for obedience, which is Satan's plan of happiness. That obedience is not agency. Go back and look at the conference titles. You'll identify specifically. And then there's one person of prominence right now, as you look back in his history of talks, where you go, oh my god. And he was on the Supreme Court of Utah. Oops, I gave it away, didn't I? But that's how you know. You have to base people's fruit on a standard. That's how you judge people by their fruits. By their fruits ye shall know a false prophet. can't know a false prophet if you don't test them. And you've got to have a standard by which to test them. And when they tell you, no, 
The living prophet is the only one to listen to. Don't listen to the dead prophets. Don't listen to other scriptures and contend against what the prophet says. Yep, that's what exactly what we're supposed to do. Those 14 um, fundamentals of, uh, of a prophet that Benson, Elder Benson gave at BYU, he was wrong. Flat out wrong. You're supposed to test the prophets. And the Book of Mormon, we kept getting told, is the keystone of our religion, right? We're supposed to test the church by the Book of Mormon. So we're supposed to look. Okay, the Book of Mormon says that the great and abominable church of Lucifer has these factors in it. And the Zoramite rich religion did this. King Noah was doing these things. Gadiat and robbers were doing these things. The Antichrist were doing these things. Okay, so I'll combine these all together. These are what we need to look for to avoid. Then you get the church. The Mormon church. And you put everything it's doing. And you compare it. All of a sudden, the hundred billion scandal is a bit bigger than you realized, isn't it, Mormons? Or bigger than you tried to lie to the public about, isn't it, Kwaku? It's just, it's heartbreaking. In 2008, I needed to test to find out if it was the presidents of the church doing this or if it was the Mormons. I found out. But I didn't understand why. Because I hadn't done church history. And I did that at the end of 2017. The murder of Joseph Smith. And I found out it was an inside job. And I had to confirm that. Which means I had to go back to the origin of the religion. With uh, Joseph Sr. and Lucy Mack in Vermont. And uh, find out Brigham Young's life. And what he was doing and what he did do. And it broke my heart. Murder to get gain. And so what are you Mormons doing about it? Are you purposely remaining ignorant? You do know that scripture, don't you? You cannot be saved in ignorance. That's a latter-day scripture. It's not a Bible one that you can just say, oh, that's mistranslated. No, Doctrine and Covenants. You cannot be saved in ignorance. So if Mormons, if you're going to claim, I'm just going to know the basics, I'm just going to work on me, uh, I, that's... That, you know, people make mistakes. If you give all those excuses, you know, it's, it's like you're spitting on the gospel. The true gospel. As you are supporting and are complicit with the church of the devil. And then you realize why the church wants us to force other people to do things. Why the church is forcing other people. You know, Prop 8 in California. The church knows better. Mormons know better. And yet we follow the church. Oh, okay. We can't allow homosexuals across this nation. 
because they're gonna they've got the gay agenda it's gonna destroy our marriage and we don't think do you and you forget the plan of salvation you forget the plan of happiness which is agency you know I don't have to be gay to know that I need to treat other human beings with love agape love and equality is treating people with love not enslaving them not hurting them and punishing them in order for them to conform and comply that's Lucifer's plan that's not God's plan that's not the plan of Jesus Christ Jesus Christ would never run his church that way according to the theology and so if, if Jesus Christ is running it then he's not really Jesus Christ he's someone else and there are only two churches <laughs> even though there's thousands but the point of that is is there's only one Jesus Christ and so even though there's thousands of churches there's only one Jesus Christ which means there's only one church that would belong to him and unfortunately we're in apostasy right now as missionaries we go and talk about the apostasy we're not taught about the apostasy in the church but that's what we're in because the church has been taken from the earth the true prophet was murdered according to the theology and people believe the lies of the Brighamite church that Joseph Smith was responsible that Joseph Smith was practicing polygamy that Joseph Smith had created section 132 that he just kept it a secret and yet it doesn't get brought out until the year before Brigham Young dies and the year after he was thrown in jail because his latest ex had him thrown in jail for non-custodial payment if you read section 132 you go oh he wants to murder any polygamous wife who betrays him and you go uh, this was not Joseph Smith at all this was not Joseph Smith who was telling Emma obey or die Joseph doesn't do that he never did that that was not Joseph's words and get the linguists they'll also tell you that it's not Joseph's words that it's not in harmony with the other scriptures that are confirmed to be Joseph's words even though we don't have any actual written text of Joseph's to verify his words because he always had others scribing for him but it's clear the manner of speech is completely different and that's the only document that the church is claiming ties Joseph Smith to polygamy and it's all a fraud so this is why I'm I'm on YouTube why I was on YouTube until the church Mormons uh, were able to silence me on that channel and why uh, I was on my website talking about this until the website all of a sudden decided you know what we're gonna change our analytical program so I don't use my website anymore I still publish but apparently they've done something different there at Amazon as well because my uh, 
my royalties tanked last year. Uh, and that may be because of several factors. I'm not quite sure yet. I just started writing more books, publishing more books through them again. So I need more time to verify if that's the case or not. But it's it's looking like uh, Amazon also is involved in that with whatever analytical program they're using. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's sad. It's sad to belong to some other church when the right church comes along. I uh, started watching uh, the new Zoe. I can't remember the full title. It's too long. Just call it Zoe. Uh, I was uh, curious about it, of course, because the, it's a redhead. <laughs> I grew up with the Charlie Brown and Snoopy show, and Peanuts from the comics, and so the little redheaded girl. Uh, so yes, I have. Uh, a thing for redheads. Not that I would uh, not marry a redhead. Uh, first wife was a, a brunette with auburn streaks. And then my uh, uh, second ex uh, was a dirty blonde auburn. After so many millennia, uh, mankind's mixing with each other has created a, a rainbow of, of colors. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, yeah, she uh, had that song, it's Sad to Belong to Someone Else. When I, no, it was a different song. Was it? I have the song in my library, but I can't search for it if I don't remember the title. <laughs> um, but, uh, and it's not Mad World. But, uh, it was the one the uh, older lady was singing in the beginning when she gets off the butt, or no, she's walking, and then it's the first woman, first woman. Yeah whatever song she was singing, I think. And then the Beatles song was on the trolley. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I added that show to my watch list now. So, good, good. But, uh, I think I'm pretty much done. Uh, so, to just sum everything up, uh, the Book of Mormon identifies corrupt organizations, corrupt religions. If Mormons, if you're not going to actually study the Book of Mormon as we're told to, commanded to be obedient to, <laughs> which I find hilarious that they're commanding us, taking away our agency to read the Book of Mormon, but if we actually did read the Book of Mormon, we'd realize they're wrong, that they're false, that they're listening to spirits that shouldn't be listened to, because it's not Jesus. It's not the words of peace and love. It's the words of control, suppression, oppression, depression, repression. <coughs> And it's, it, it's sad, you know, that Mormons think that they're the church of agency and dichotomy has become agency. Dichotomy is not agency. That's obedience. Obedience is dichotomy. Do it or you're punished. That's dichotomy. Dichotomy is not agency. 
And so I hope I'm connecting with Mormons who have not shut me out. So I may have to title this in a manner in which it gets Mormons' attention. Because non-Mormons, you guys all know. Ex-Mormons, you definitely know. It's the Mormons we need to get. We need to save them. Because when you realize how evil the church really is, how destructive it is, I hope that within you, you want to rescue them, as I've been trying to do for the last several years. And they aren't going to accept it, because remember, they're the hardcore Mormons. And so I don't know if Mormons are still listening. I don't know if anybody's listening. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, something's got to be done. This cannot be allowed. So I'm hungry, I didn't get lunch. So we'll see. Uh, last I checked, they didn't process it on the internet. So I hope it does. And I hope it doesn't get delayed further. Uh, recusal will delay it, obviously, but hopefully somebody will be reassigned and immediately say, okay, motion of process granted. Motion of service of process. That's my hope. So that we can end this. Because like I said in the other video, the church, once they get it, they have no choice but to plead no contest. They do not want the evidence that I have to get out to the public. And I've already notified in my filing that I will motion for this to go public. To protect me. That's why the church wants it secret, so that they can punish me. So, uh, we'll just have to wait and see.